Good day and God bless you and welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us in this video and participating with us in this venture to complete the Bible in a single year. And I pray that the overview and that the reading of the word of the Lord would be a blessing to you today, even as we would go through it together. Today we're busy in the book of Lamentations again, and we're going to be going through the second half of chapter 3 from verse 37 to verse 66, and then chapters 4 and 5 as well. And when we get into chapter 3, we're just going to recap a little bit because we have been through verses 1 to 36 in which we went through the prophetic suffering of the prophet Jeremiah, in which he alludes to the Lord, the great I am, which took upon himself the suffering of man as a payment for sin. Now, this is a fascinating passage and one that would be best appreciated by studying it in detail in a verse-by-verse -verse study, if you will. We then saw how the prophet acknowledges the mercies of the Lord, which saved them from utter destruction. And then we read of his worship to the Lord for his tender mercies and compassion, even in chastisement. We now move on to verse 37 through to 66, in which the prophet makes a sincere and humble confession of his sins. He does so in the light of God's justice and power, and then begins to exhort the people to come to the Lord in repentance because the Lord will not hear the cries of the people because of their idolatry and constant evil. And so the prophet weeps, he laments until the Lord will hear him. But he acknowledges that the Lord heard him and answered him. Thus he pleads his cause before the Lord and asks the Lord to bring justice to those that have rewarded him evil unjustly. We then get to chapter 4, and in this chapter, Zion bewails her pitiful estate. This is a view of Jerusalem during the siege by the Babylonians, so in the time that the city was being overtaken. It speaks about how things were before the siege and how things are at this time, and the contrast is one that can really break your heart. It is shocking which lends to the impact of the lament of the prophet. It almost allows us to get into his head a little bit as well. The chapter closes with a threat to Edom, and the Lord says that the punishment of Zion is accomplished, but now the visitation of the iniquity of Edom has come. And then we get to chapter 5, and chapter 5 breaks the design pattern in that it still has 22 verses, yes, but it is not an acrostic, um, so the alphabet order is now gone. It's almost as if the prophet cannot even keep going through the ferocity of his lament. He's struggling to keep it all together, as it were. But this chapter is a complaint and a prayer to the Lord for his mercy by the nation, not just the prophet. No. The people lay their thoughts bare before the Lord and await his answer because they have lost everything. They feel like almost they have been treated too harshly in their punishment. And so they bring this to the Lord. Everything that the Lord had given them, they now have to work for, they have to buy, they have to beg to enjoy. And not even enjoy, but just to have the basic necessities. But they do acknowledge their sin and plead with the Lord to turn to them again, even though they are afraid that he might not. Now we in our age at least have the benefit of the New Testament and the price that was paid for the sins of mankind. But this book, written by the prophet Jeremiah at, at this almost worst time in the history of the land of Judah, must be read with that time frame and context in mind. And it may give us more insight into the actual grace and mercy of the Lord in our lives today, and may also shake us up a little bit as well, which I truly believe is a good thing for our age. Anyway, this is where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good? Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. 
we have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Thou hast made us as the off-scouring and refuse in the midst of the people. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and a snare has come upon us, desolation and destruction. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mine eye trickleth down and ceaseth not without any intermission, till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. Mine eye affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chased me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters flowed over mine head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice. Hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidst, Fear not. O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my cause. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. I am their music. Render unto them a recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of the Lord. Chapter 4 How has the gold become dim? How has the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out on the top of every street. The precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet embrace dunghills. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown as in a moment, and no hands stayed on her. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord hath accomplished his fury. He hath poured out his fierce anger and hath kindled a fire in Zion and it hath devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her, they have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord hath divided them. He will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests. They favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watchings, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near, our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. 
the breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Chapter 5 Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fathers. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. They ravished the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of elders were not honored. They took the young men to grind and the children fell under the wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown is fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. For this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. Because of the mountain of Zion which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever. Thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. The end of the Lamentations of Jeremiah.